is Tony Alcazar. I'm the chef owner of Crooked Gaff Kitchen. Here we specialize in oysters. We do a lot of seafood, but we also do steaks and burgers and sandwiches that are fun for the whole family. Well, I've been in this location now for about two years. We took it over for about two years, and then after one year, the pandemic hit. And so we stayed afloat by doing sandwiches and pastas and food that people can eat every day. So I get a lot of people asking me what Crooked Gaff Kitchen means, and to be honest, I kept the name from the previous owners. Um, what a Crooked Gaff is actually technically a fishing hook, which is already crooked at the end, and you kind of just pick the fish up from the hook. Um, but the building is it's pretty unique. It's, it's a standalone building just a little bit away from uh, the heart of Uptown Whittier, which is a little bit of a struggle. Um, during the beginning, I felt that it was going to be a big struggle, but lately, and even through the pandemic, uh, I feel that that, that, that that destination doesn't matter. The location doesn't matter. It's what we're serving, um, delicious food, delicious beer. It's a very cool ambiance inside, which um, I kind of kept most of from what the previous owners did. What I did do is I spent a little bit more money in the kitchen and upgrading some of the equipment and making it feel more like a chef-run kitchen. So a lot of people ask me also what, like, what, what the place is about. The place is really about a lot of local stuff. You know? If you look at the fixtures in here, they were made by a local steel guy. Um, the beers are all local, uh, mostly California. Um, but we do have a lot of... Uh, um, Northern California, all the way to Southern California breweries. We do, we're one of the only accounts to have Russian River Brewing, which I was able to bring on board from the bottle room. If you guys remember that place, I used to be the chef and owner over there. Uh, had an exquisite beer list, one of the best in LA. Um, so I, I kind of brought some of that over here as well. We are, we are doing all craft beer. Um, we actually make some, some drinks with beer as well, like our micheladas, a killer, um, you know, that's kind of what we're all about. We're embracing Whittier and the local area. Today we're going to be making a crab esquite the way we do here at Crooked Gap Kitchen. We're going to start off with uh, grilling some corns. That's the most integral part of the dish. Uh, part of what makes this dish so great is the jalapeno mayo, so we're going to start by grilling those as well. You want to see them pretty much all charred like this. As you keep turning them, they should continue to char on every side. Same with the jalapenos. All right guys, so you can see here that the jalapenos are very charred. I'm not even gonna bother removing the skins or the stems or the seeds. That all adds a ton, a ton of flavor. And that's what we're looking for. So here we go, straight into my Vitamix. Jalapenos, lime juice, raw garlic, dried oregano, white pepper, cilantro, about a quarter bunch. And then I'm going to get four cups of mayonnaise. Take this straight over to the blender. light green. Okay, so I'm just 
All right, guys, so the way we uh, execute this on any given Friday night or any other night of the week at CGK, corn, crab meat, salt, pepper, good squeeze, oh, sorry, some olive oil, and we saute. We saute that until it's very hot. So guys, uh, you saw how we charred the corn. I would not recommend you ever buy frozen, store-bought, already cut corn. It's just totally different texture. It tends to stay really wet and gross. Um, what's nice about the way we're cooking our corn here is that it stays, gives a really nice chew. So that, that's why we do that. Also, you wouldn't be able to get the dark char off of already cut corn. Next step, turn off the flame. We're gonna add our jalapeno mayonnaise. Stir that in. It smells amazing, it smells so amazing. All right guys, then we spoon this on here. You don't want to just throw it onto the plate. If you can smell it, it's so great. You can smell all the fresh crab and corn and jalapeno. Every time we finish, freshly squeezed lemon juice. A little tahini. Cotija cheese and garnish with a little cilantro. And that is our dish crab esquite at the Crooked Gap Kitchen. of friends that sometimes want to go to the Crooked Gaff, but maybe they don't feel like eating fish or oysters. Um, that that kind of sucks because we're so much more than that. We do steaks, we do burgers, we have a killer fried chicken sandwich. Um, not only that, I really try to focus on lots of vegetables to where we have a veggies and sides uh, options on our menu. Um, green beans, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, corn, just, you know, spicy cauliflower. It's all super delicious. I think we have something for everybody here. Now, I would not, not like to be painted up against the corner saying that we only do seafood or, or only oysters. Um, but, you know, beautiful steaks, beautiful sandwiches, vegetables, fries. <laughs> we do a little bit of everything. So my, my culinary um, background starts from when I was a little kid. Um, I was hungry one morning and everybody was still asleep and I made myself a, a hot dog with a tortilla and ketchup. Really started there. And then into high school I started making a lot of spaghetti bolognese. It's one of my favorite dishes. It's probably my last meal dish. Um, after that I started cooking a little bit here and there and it wasn't until I got to the Ritz Carlton in Pasadena where I started working for Craig Strong. He's my mentor and he taught me everything, uh, everything, everything for, from cooking. Uh, he's a Michelin starred chef, so I, I can tell people that I work for a Michelin starred chef. Um, after that, uh, I worked as a head chef of a little bistro in South Pasadena that's still there. Uh, then I became a sous chef for a big uh, corporate restaurant group called Patina. Uh, I was a sous chef at Nick and Steph's Steakhouse, which is a amazing experience um, and then after that we did the bottle room and that was a 10-year run 
we opened up a second store and then uh, I became a corporate chef for Congregation Ale House and I oversaw four restaurants and that's when um, Crooked Gap happened. It was just meant to be. We kind of stumbled upon Whittier. I had been coming here since I was a little kid for no real reason. Um, we had been uh, looking for spots to build the bottle room and we happened to stop by here and found this spot that eventually became the bottle room. Um, so I worked there and again, like I said, that was a 10 year run. So within those first four or five years, I had made so many friends and the clientele really needed something that we were offering, which is really great beer and really great food. Um, so I've made more friends in Whittier at this, at the jo as a job at the bottle room than I have anywhere else. People are very warm and unique and genuine. You know? and, um, Whittier is just a really cool place. Uptown Whittier is a very unique place. Uh, lots of people building uh, very cool concepts, family driven, not a whole lot of corporate driven places. Um, I like that uh, so much that we ended up moving here about six, seven years ago. So we've been a real part of this community um, all the way, all the way. Um, part, of the, part of what I love about my job is that I get to do both. I'm a chef and an owner, and I have to do all the other stuff. Like, I should probably go pick up that phone right now, but I'm not, I'm not going to. Uh, part of what makes my, my job awesome and difficult is that I, I do all the creative stuff in the kitchen, and I get to cook in the kitchen every single day, which is awesome. Um, but also all the struggles as being an owner and like maybe certain things that I didn't know about running a business all by myself. Um, you know, just like anything, building a tent outside for, for the pandemic, um, getting the indoors ready for the pandemic. Um, <clears throat> it's a struggle. And since we're talking about the pandemic, um, yeah, about... Uh, Beginning of 2020 was excellent. We had uh, had record uh, nights. We were just selling a ton. Every week was getting busier. January was busy. February was busier. Uh, first week of March was the busiest week we had ever done. And then that followed uh, with a sh sharp decline in business due to the pandemic, which started around uh, March 17th, I want to say, right around one of the busiest nights of the year that ended up not happening. Uh, we, you know, you hear the word pivot a lot and that's exactly what we did. We, we took our concept and we, we turned it into a sandwich shop, believe it or not. We did um, all of our sandwiches, any of our sides, two of each for 22 bucks. And I wanna say that that really helped us survive um, the slowest of slowest times. Uh, and then we got hit with uh, the protests that, that kind of hurt us really bad. And you could ask any restaurant owner how bad that hurt. Um, and then we were able to do outdoor dining, which was really cool. Um, started Sales started coming back up just a little bit. And then after Thanksgiving, we got shut down again. And that, that really hurt. Um, a lot of, a lot of um, pros and cons to, to what happened. Um, <clears throat> my staff... You know, my kitchen staff never lost a day of work. That's a good thing. Uh, I had to do stuff in front of the house that I'm not comfortable doing with. I did that. Um, we just had to really tell ourselves that we're going to make it to the other side. And so far, the, this last couple, these last couple of weeks, uh, really feels like we're getting there. And we're opening up indoors now. Uh, a smaller capacity, obviously, but we're still really busy. So people love the food. Again, it's not it's not the location. It's what you're offering people. And through a pandemic, I want to say we, we made it. I'm looking at my menu and I'm thinking of like what our signatures dishes are. And there's there's a bunch. Um, you know, the crab esquite that we're learning to make, the uh, yellowfin tuna tostada, the crab cake, the clam chowder is excellent. Um, the menu changes quite a bit, but not too much. And if, if it does change, sometimes it's just a tweak. For example, the shrimp and crab pasta today is spaghetti with Alfredo and peas. Tomorrow, it's probably gonna be the squid ink linguine with uh, lobster um, broth. So that's gonna change for sure. Um, part of what I love about cooking at my restaurants is always doing the proteins. Cooking the fish, grilling the steaks, 
the bigger items. You know, right now we're doing a special of a whole whole bronzino that is uh, basically we gut out all the bones from a, from a sea bass and then we stuff it and grill the whole thing. Um, people come for that. They love that kind of stuff, you know. But we have a new dish on the menu as well that's, that's uh, crunchy tuna pokey taco. And it's, we sell so many of those, it's crazy. Like I should open up a shop that does only those. And we probably do okay. <laughs> um, but the burger, you know, people love the burger here too. It's um, flat iron steak. Brussels sprouts is probably the highest selling vegetable at this restaurant, which is such a great, great dish. Um, I love cooking those dishes too. So simple, but delicious. Setlitz from the Whittier Public Library Foundation. I'm here to thank you for participating in this series, What's Cooking at the Library. Your contribution will add to our renovation campaign. We're improving the library with many additions, an improved children's section and veterans resource center, more computers, and many other enhancements to our central library. Thank you for your contribution. As another thank you, we would like to invite you to stay till the very last program in our series. We will be having a drawing for one of five $100 gift certificates to one of our five restaurants. Thanks to our generous donors, Norm and Theola Kirschenbaum. Stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in February of 2022 at our new and improved Whittier Public Library.